Okay, friends. So here's the same article I just mentioned. Um, and there's the link to it in case you want to track down the, uh, the, the article itself. Uh, I do find it kind of interesting that the picture they put is not actually in the U.S. It's in Nepal. But I guess it was a pretty picture and they wanted to show deep snow. Uh, I, I read the article and there was some interesting stuff in the article that, that, that I stumbled upon. Um, the Colorado Avalanche Information Center, who we'll come back to in a second. I like their data. They keep very, very uh, detailed data sets. Uh, we're only halfway through the season and we're three quarters of the way to the number of fatalities we'd see in a typical year. So, you know, I love any time I can read an article like this and I can identify words like typical. It brings, you know, Math 243 to life. Um, so anyway, I went and checked out the Colorado Avalanche Information Center. And this is, uh, this is their historical data. This does not include this particular winter we're in right now. They do this at the end of the winter. So the last winter on record is 1920. And you can see that there's definitely a rise in avalanche fatalities in the U.S. The earliest data they have is 1951, and then it scrolls all the way up to 20, uh, 2020. So I kept digging, and on the avalanche.org website, as of today, uh, today is March 4th, 2021, um, 33 folks have died in avalanches in the U.S. this season. Now, I, the the season of avalanches starts in September and goes to the end of August. So I can't really look at this data here and compare it to this data here because this data from the 2020-21 season started in September and is only through February since I'm sitting here in early March. So I had to go and look at this data and take out the deaths from March, April, May, June, July, and August. And that's what I did here. So this is a spreadsheet that's available to you off the website, uh, just right underneath the uh, the video links. And it's the edited version. There's the source right there I pulled the data down from. Uh, it's the edited version, which means I took out all the March, April through August uh, avalanche deaths to keep it apples, apples with this year's so far. Um, it's interesting too, as I was looking through the data, it's, it's fascinating just how many avalanches can actually happen in the summertime, depending on where you are. Not clearly not in central Oregon, but where there are steeper faces that hold snow later into the summer, like Alaska, for example, kind of, kind of crazy. Anyway, um, what I've also done, and you can, you can kind of scroll down and see all the data here from all the way up to 2021. Uh, I've also put it into pasteable form. Um, one of the things you're going to notice as you go through statistics more and more is uh, if you ever have to use other statistics calculators besides the one that I built for you, um, getting data into the calculator can often be kind of a pain in the butt. So I've decided I copied and pasted it into a brick. So now what you can do is select that data, copy it, and then if you open the Excel calculator, you can paste it directly into, uh, into the calculator. Boom, and now it's right there, everything's in there. Uh, now, look down at the histogram of this uh, of this data, and you notice, and you can goof around with the number of bars, there's 10 bars, we can make 20 bars, and really, no matter how you mess with the bars, it really doesn't matter, um, th there's gonna be skew. And as a matter of fact, if you look over here, I, uh, I put a skew checker into your Excel calculator. Depending on your data sets, it'll either say not really skewed, kind of skewed, or totally skewed. And again, I want you to lean more on what the histogram looks like, but I think some people kind of like having this little tiny reminder here. But yeah, the histogram, I think, uh, you can tell it's skewed. You can tell it's definitely not like a bell-shaped or a symmetric or a, you know, a humped with a high point in the middle and two tails. It's, it's leaning to one side. So because of that, you might want to maybe reconsider using the average and maybe lean more towards the median. So that's what that skew checker is over here. Just wanted to let you know about that. So get yourself a nice graph that you like. I kind of liked 15. 15 bars is pretty good. How about 20? What does 20 look like? Yeah, it really doesn't matter. Um, which number of bars you get, you can't really escape that skew. Nor do we want to. I want to be able to kind of measure it and, and deal with it on its own terms. So next, let's look at something we haven't looked at yet, which is the second little brick underneath the standard deviation and the average and the absolute deviation and all that stuff. I've only looked at one value in so far, the median. The median in this data set is nine, which means that half of the years on record had fewer than nine deaths and half had more. That means the median, as we've already discussed, is the 50th percentile. So now you might be wondering, what's that Q with a little sub two? Okay, 
So, quick answer, Q stands for quartile. Slightly longer answer. Yesterday, we spent a lot of time talking about percentiles, which was taking a data set and breaking it up into 100 equal pieces. And that's awesome. But that's not always used. Sometimes quartiles are used. So what does a quartile do? Well, the word quart hopefully makes you think four. It takes the data set and breaks it up into four equal pieces. And the quartiles are the dividers that do that. Let's take a look at how with the avalanche data. All right, so we're back here in the spreadsheet. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is sort the, uh, the actual data itself. If we're gonna talk about percentiles, we're talking about cutoffs that trap lower and upper values. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do a little sort. Uh, you, know, you know what, I'll keep the years with it. Yeah, so in 1963, there were no deaths. 64, there were no deaths. 53, there was one, and you got, you know, all the way down. And now what I wanna do is I'm just gonna put a rank column over here. And this is gonna be pretty simple. Um, all I'm gonna do is I'm going to type the numbers one, two, three, and I'm gonna copy that all the way down. And that puts a ranking on all of the years, okay? Now, I know some of the years have the same number, like here in 93, 05, and 06, all had 16 deaths. They're calling them ranks 53, 54, 55. You might remember that we've dealt with data sets with repeated values before, and the median doesn't care. It just keeps track of the total number and finds the middle of that total data set. So if I know I've got 71 years, what number is in the middle? Well, let's see. If I divide 71 in half, I get 35 and a half. That tells me something. That means that there are 35 numbers at the bottom, right? I'm gonna color those. Let's color those like a light yellow. And then there are 35 numbers at the top. Color that bright yellow too, why not? That means this number right here has to be the median. That number right there. So that's why you remember from the Excel calculator that nine was the median number of avalanche deaths in the US in the data set that we currently have. Because it has divided the bottom half of the data from the top half of the data. Good. Now, why is it called the second quartile? Well, if you look at this lower half of the data, you can break it into two equal pieces itself, each of which is a quarter. A quarter plus a quarter is a half. So what the quartiles do is they chop up the data, not into 100 pieces, but into four large pieces. And that's helpful for data sets like this where there aren't 100 pieces to divide. So now let's cut up this bottom 35. We're gonna remedian this, so to speak. So there's 35 data points. Let's use the same logic. If I divide 35 in half, I get 17 and a half. That must mean that the bottom 17, let's color that a slightly different color, and the top 17, there we go, are separated by the 18th data value right here, which means this guy right here, four deaths, We'll color that too, like we did the median. Four deaths must be the median of the lower half of the data. So we've cut it, there's 25% of the data, here's 25% of the data, and that number right there is the number that divides those bottom 25%. And that is the number that you saw over here in Q1. That's called the lower quartile. You can also call it the 25th percentile because it's what it is. It's the number in the data set that chops off the bottom 25% of the data, as you can see right here. Let's do the same thing for the top half of the data, the years with the, with the largest numbers. So we, it's gotta be the exact same number, 17. So if I come up until I've selected 17, that's them right there. Let's color them a little bit different. And then the bottom 17 are right here. There's 17 there. That means this number, the 54th place, whatever that number of deaths is, it's the upper quartile or 75th percentile. Remember, 75th percentile because 75% of all of the data is below this number. So if we come back over to our Excel calculator, you'll see it right there. Q3 is 16 deaths per year. So going back over here, that's why this puppy dog is Q3. So there's your three main quartiles. Q3 is the same thing as the 75th percentile. 
Q2 is the same thing as the median or the, or the uh, 50th percentile. And Q1 is the 25th percentile or the lower quartile. Okay, take a deep breath. Everything I just did in that Abby spreadsheet is not what you have to do every time you're confronted with a data set. You don't have to do the sort and the division and then the figuring out where the... That's one of the many reasons I built you the Excel calculator. So you don't have to do all that. You have to know what they mean though. So and hopefully now we understand pretty well what the median, why it's called Q2, and why the upper and lower quartiles, Q1 and Q3, are what they are. There were two others in that chart you might or might not have noticed, Q0 and Q4. Hopefully they're self-explanatory. Um, Q0 is the minimum value, the smallest data point, and Q4 is the maximum or the largest data point. Those five numbers taken together, the minimum, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the max, are called the five number summary of a data set. And it's really cool to analyze five number summaries because they give you kind of a glimpse through only five values of what the entire data set is doing. Let's take a look at that next.